Good morning. My name is Dr. Carl Chalky, and I am the Chief Executive Officer and Chief Medical Officer at the Retina Foundation of the Southwest in Dallas, Texas. Today is the last in our series of videos where we've been sharing with you how we do research at the Retina Foundation. Today, we will hear from Kirsten Locke and Kaylee Jones from the Rose Silverthorne Retinal Degeneration Laboratory, and they will talk to us about the importance of genetic, genetic testing for these inherited retinal disorders and the update on the current status of ongoing clinical trials, especially using gene therapy for these diseases. All of our previous videos will be available on our website, uh, so please feel free to watch them at any time, and I hope you enjoy this video as well. My name is Kaylee Jones, and I'm a Senior Research Associate in the Rose Silverthorne Retinal Degenerations Lab at the Retina Foundation of the Southwest. For almost 12 years, I've worked with patients and their families to help them identify and understand the genetic mutation causing their vision loss. Why is genetic testing so important? Inherited retinal diseases can include retinitis pigmentosa, cone and cone rod dystrophies, macular dystrophies, and other rare syndromic forms of disease. There are currently over 285 genes associated with inherited retinal disease. There are several benefits to knowing the underlying genetic cause of your retinal disease. For one, it can help confirm or narrow down a diagnosis. Knowing the gene mutation can help you better understand how the disease may affect your vision during your lifetime. And since these diseases are genetic, they can affect multiple generations of a family. Depending on the gene mutation, the disease can follow different inheritance patterns, each of which have a different risk to family members. Genetic testing can determine if any other family members or children are at risk of inheriting the condition and what the chances are that other family members will inherit the disease. There continues to be enormous advances in potential treatments for inherited retinal diseases. Numerous clinical trials are currently underway to evaluate the safety and efficacy of these potential treatments. Knowing your specific gene mutation can help you identify appropriate clinical trials for your form of retinal disease. Knowing your genetic mutation is an essential step towards qualifying for clinical trials. At each patient's appointment, we sit down and discuss the importance of genetic testing as well as the different ways we can get access to testing. Most patients choose to enroll in the Foundation Fighting Blindness sponsored My Retina Tracker genetic testing study. The study includes a pre-testing counseling session, enrollment into the registry, and collection of a blood or saliva sample. The test results usually take one to two months to be completed. Once the results are completed, each patient receives genetic counseling to help them understand the result and what the next steps are. Another important part of research and clinical trials are registries. Patient registries, such as the Southwest Eye Registry and the Foundation Fighting Blindness's My Retina Tracker, are research databases of patients and their families that are used to accelerate the discovery of treatments and cures. The Retina Foundation is unique in that we have a registry spanning over 30 years that includes data from patients and families longitudinally. This allows us to see how diseases affect individuals and their family members across generations. These collections of data also enable research collaborations with other groups so that scientists can better understand these diseases and how to treat them. These registries are also used to help researchers find participants for research studies and clinical trials. Here at the Retina Foundation, we enroll patients in these registries so they can be contacted now and in the future as more clinical trials become available. Hi, my name is Kirsten Locke, and I am the Clinical Trials Manager at the Retina Foundation of the Southwest. I have worked in the Rose Silver Thorn Retinal Degeneration Laboratory with Dr. David Birch for almost 25 years. Our research focuses on many different inherited retinal diseases, which all have one thing in common. They can lead to permanent blindness over a lifetime, with some at an earlier age than others. At this time, there is no approved treatment to prevent blindness in the vast majority of these conditions. Now that my colleague, Kaylee Jones, have provided you with an overview of registries and the importance of genetic testing, I would like to discuss a couple of different diseases we study 
and to highlight a couple of clinical trials currently taking place in the Rose Silverthorne Retinal Degeneration Laboratory. The first condition I would like to talk to you about is retinitis pigmentosa, often referred to as RP. RP has many different forms, each form being determined by the genetic mutation. A genetic mutation is a mistake in the DNA where a particular protein is misfolded or completely missing. Perhaps the most severe form of RP is X-linked retinitis pigmentosa, located on the X chromosome. The X chromosome is one of the chromosomes that controls gender. As you can see, a female has two X chromosomes, and a male has one X and one Y. A female can be carriers of the disease with one good X and one bad X, and have some signs of the disease at varying levels of severity. The male with only one bad X will get the disease. Symptoms from the X-linked form of the retinitis pigmentosa usually start early in life, sometimes as early as seven years of age. Other times symptoms begin to appear in the teenage years or early 20s. X-link typically starts with loss of night vision and blind spots in the peripheral or side vision. This eventually leads to complete loss of peripheral vision, which results in patients experiencing tunnel vision and often some damage to their central vision too. Many will be legally blind with a visual field less than 20 degrees in their late 20s and in most cases completely functional blind in their later adult years. Visual field is the expansion of vision we see above, below, left and right when looking at a fixed point. The diameter of the visual field should be about 120 degrees. Being legally blind is defined by the federal government as a person with vision that expands no more than 10 degrees in either direction from the center. Another definition is that a person is unable to read letters on the eye chart smaller than 2200, which means the person cannot see at 20 feet what a normal seeing person can make out at 200 feet. The line you see at the top of this chart is the 2200 line. Being functionally blind is when a person is unable to perform normal daily functions without assistance. The only currently available treatment are vitamins and supplements to possibly slow down the progression of vision loss. The second condition we study is X-linked chorodoremia. The mutation for this condition is located on a gene called CHM and is also on the X chromosome. Therefore, it also predominantly affects males. The female carriers often have abnormally looking retinas but in most cases do not experience any visual symptoms. Chorodoremia in many ways is similar to RP in that it affects night vision early in life and has been known to be misdiagnosed in early stages. This is another reason why genetic testing is so important. Genetic testing helps us identify and diagnose very similar diseases. For patients with X-linked chorodoremia, circular blind spot begins to appear in their peripheral vision, getting progressively larger over time. Eventually, the circular spots will completely cover the entire peripheral vision. Because of this pattern, the side vision can have branches of vision much like the branches on a tree. Unlike RP, the central vision for patients with X-linked chorodoremia usually stays good until much later in life. However, the end result of legal and functional blindness is the same in both conditions. As you can see, the need for more research is great, and we have worked on clinical trials for these two conditions for several years. For X-linked retinitis pigmentosa, we are currently conducting follow-up visits for two clinical trials. For the treatment to reach the part of the retina with the light-sensitive cells called photoreceptors, it needs to be injected under the retina by performing a surgical procedure called vitrectomy with a subretinal injection. The gene treatment is transported into the retina with the help of a vector that carries the healthy gene and is programmed to reach the photoreceptors. One study we are conducting is a phase one clinical trial. A phase one clinical trial is conducted to make sure a treatment is safe. 
It is also the first time that the treatment has been put into the human eye. We have been following patients for up to a year and have not had a major safety concern. We have also seen exciting indication of benefit, especially for patients with a gene replacement therapy injected under the central retina at the location of the best potential vision. The other X-linked RP study currently in follow-up is a phase two randomized trial where participants are dividing into two groups. One group received treatment in one eye and the other group functions as an untreated control group. Having a control group is just as important as having a treatment group to compare how the condition changes over time. The treatment is also delivered via a vitrectomy and a subretinal injection. As this clinical trial was for people with more advanced disease, all participants were treated in the center of the retina at the location of their best vision. The first study I'd like to tell you about for X-linked chorodoremia is also a randomized surgical treatment trial, which is now in follow-up. The study was designed the same way with a treatment group and a control group, and the subretinal treatment was placed in the center of the vision. We are currently getting ready to enroll participants from one of our natural history studies into a clinical trial for chorodoremia. This treatment will utilize a brand new vector that should be able to reach the retina by simply injecting it into the center of the eye. One potential advantage of this is that the treatment should reach more of the retina and not just a small local area as with the subretinal injections. Another difference is that this injection can be done in the doctor's office and does not require surgery. To figure out if these treatments work as we hope, several different types of assessments are done to evaluate the vision. We test visual acuity on all our patients. This involves reading letters that get smaller and smaller on either a wall chart or a computer screen. Patient with perfect vision have 20-20 vision and will be able to read 11 full lines on the eye chart shown. Patient in the beginning stage of X-linked RP will usually have between 20-20 or 20-50 vision, whereas most patients with chorodoremia can have between 20-20 and 20-25 vision until they get much older. Eventually, patient with X-linked RP and chorodoremia will no longer be able to see any letters on the letter chart and their visual acuity will need to be determined by a finger count or a hand motion evaluation. We also complete visual field tests which map out the peripheral vision or side vision. To complete this assessment, our patients are shown a series of small dots of light in various locations. Two different types are possible, with one having a stationary dot of light that will appear at different locations and at a various levels of brightness. This assessment is called static visual field. The other type is called a kinetic visual field, and this time the dot of light will be of a single brightness that change in size. The dot of light will move in from a non-seeing area and into the visual field. For both types of visual fields, we ask the patients that they push a button every time they see one of the small dots of light. Here is an example of what a visual field map looks like for an individual with no peripheral vision loss. Now on the left is a static visual field map of a patient with X-linked RP. The numbers you see tell us how dim the light could be and still be seen. The higher the number, the dimmer the light. The small black dots represents area where even the brightest light was not seen. On the right, you have a kinetic visual field map of a patient with X-linked chorodoremia. The blue lines represent the largest spot size the red line the medium spot size, and the green line the smallest. Areas with a solid color are blind spots where the corresponding spot size was not seen. Imaging is a very important part of ophthalmology. We take pictures of the retina in several different ways. Optical coherence tomography, also called OCT, is a way to image the thickness of the retina and measure how the photoreceptors changes as the disease gets worse. Here is a side-by-side -side OCT scan of a normal retina on the top and below an OCT scan of a 26-year-old patient with middle-stage RP. 
autofluorescent imaging uses a bright light to stimulate the pigment cells under the retina and make them admit a light that can be captured and the lit area is measured for change over time. Here is a side-by-side -side image of a normal retina on the right next to an autofluorescent image of a 22-year-old patient with X-linked chorodoremia. The dark area is seen on the image of the eye with chorodoremia but not seen in the image of the normal retina are areas where both the pigment cells and the photoreceptors are lost. All these tests and more are required to answer these questions about potential treatments and we are grateful for all our participants and their willingness to provide their time to take part in these studies. Without these pioneers, eye research would be very difficult. So to conclude, thank you for tuning in to this update from the Rose Silverthorne Retinal Degeneration Laboratory at the Retina Foundation. I hope you are staying safe and we appreciate your support in our research efforts.